Ferguson. Good afternoon and welcome to The Balance of Life. I am Elder Angel Ferguson and I thank you so very much for joining us today. It is truly a honor and a pleasure to come and spend some time in the Word of God with you. We are super excited. Truly, this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. I don't know about you, but uh, let me say this. I, I feel a, a liberation in the Holy Spirit today. I feel liberated. I feel free. Uh, God is doing something in the atmosphere, and I am so glad uh, that He is allowing me to experience it. And it has nothing to do with a feeling a feeling of the flesh it's in my spirit and so I'm excited today uh, we would love for you to become partners in prayer with us uh, there are different methods in which you can become partners in prayer with us partners in prayer is is where we keep each other lifted up in the body of Christ that all you have to do is email us at aFergusonWRP at yahoo.com. If you would like to become a partner in prayer with us and sowing a financial seed, please send all inquiries to aFergusonWRP at yahoo.com. Our cash app is AF Ministries. What you will assist us in doing is furthering our, our footprint in the ministry. And while we're setting up, I know that we are here on radio, but we are also going to log in into our, uh, our YouTube channel. And, and we're continuing this series, The Oracles of the Holy Spirit. And, and so uh, this is what sowing a seed and uh, within this ministry and becoming a partner in prayer with us lift us up we as we lift you up we truly believe that uh, where you pray ye one for another that ye may be healed and that's for every area of your life if you would like for us to uh, connect with you and unify with you in prayer uh, making mention of your ministry, your business, uh, your organization, upcoming events, please email us at aFergusonWRP at yahoo.com. Uh, we will make mention of that for you so that we can help spread the word about your upcoming services, your ministry, your business. If you are, are an author and would like for us to make mention of your uh, releases, uh, please feel free to email us. Once again, our email address is aFergusonWRP at yahoo.com. And, and I just want to uh, say thank you for joining us via our uh, YouTube uh, channel broadcast as well as here on radio. God is, is, is simply awesome. And, and so what we're going to share, we're in a continued series. We are continuing to talk about the oracles of the Holy Spirit. And, and I, we started this on yesterday, and, and I'm grabbing my word here, something that the Holy Spirit dropped to me. And so I am the first partaker of this word. And, and so while we, because this is a series and it is a special edition, we will go over our normal radio broadcasting time which is normally 12.30 to 1 o'clock p.m. But because we are in a series and, and God really wants, uh, this, this needs to be taught, we will go over it as a teaching series. If you would like a copy of this series, please feel free to email us at aferguson at wrp at yahoo.com. Uh, today's date, April the 18th, 2019. We started this series on yesterday. But the subject matter is the oracles of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Yesterday when we started this, we came and shared with you Joel 2, 28 and 29. 
And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. And also upon the servants and upon the handmaids in those days will I pour out my spirit. I truly believe in order for us to experience the fullness of God, we have to understand the Trinity and the individual roles. Uh, right now, we're looking at the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is so much. We, we have to have an understanding of, of just who the Holy Spirit is, how we are supposed to handle the Holy Spirit, to be mindful, to beware, uh, to follow the instructions of the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit is, is, is giving us instructions and messages from God. And there are those times where we say, I want to hear directly from God. Well, you are hearing directly from God. You're hearing directly from God through the Holy Spirit. And it is so important that we follow the instructions given to us by the Holy Spirit. When we set out not to follow those instructions, we are disobeying the voice of God. The Holy Spirit is the voice of God. He speaks to us. What we're going to share during this series is how to recognize His voice. We're also going to discuss the gifts of the Holy Spirit the characteristics of the Holy Spirit. Submitting ourselves. Submission is a big thing. Submitting unto the authority, meaning to become obedient to the voice, to the movement of the Holy Spirit. That's where the, the spirit of discernment comes in. So that we know when we're being led and guided, when we're told to move, when we're told to stand still, when we're told to speak, when we're told to be quiet, uh, we're even directed in our prayers, uh, in our, our, our worship, in our praise, and what passage of scripture to read. The Holy Spirit he is the spirit of truth. We need him. We need to communicate with him. The Holy Spirit is our invitation, is our guide into the presence of God. And so we should invite the Holy Spirit. We should welcome the Holy Spirit. Because when we welcome the Holy Spirit, to lead us and to guide us, to reveal unto us the mysteries of God's word, he then brings us into the presence of the Lord. It must be keen that we do not grieve, that we do not hinder the work of the Holy Spirit that we are not disobedient to the Holy Spirit. But if we do not know who the Holy Spirit is, if we do not know the importance of just who the Holy Spirit is, he is the third person of the Trinity. When God spoke into existence, the heavens and the earth, the Holy Spirit was there. It tells us in Genesis. This is so good. And I thank God for allowing me to spend time here. Genesis, the first chapter beginning at the first verse. 
it says in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth and the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep and the spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters and so the Holy Spirit has always been there before the beginning of time we had the word in the beginning was the word and the word was God and the word was with God. Now, uh, he sent the word in the likeness of flesh. And that's some things that we share with you in part one of this series, the oracles of the Holy Spirit. We also share with you uh, just some things and, and we're going to extend it as we get to certain aspects, but I wanted to just do a quick recap uh, we are supposed to beware of the Holy Spirit. We are supposed to obey the voice of the Holy Spirit. We're not supposed to provoke him, uh, for he will not pardon our transgressions, for my name is in him. They are one. We're uh, to obey his voice and do all that I speak. We are reminded that Jesus said to us, we're going to go over to uh, we're going to go over to First Corinthians today. So I want to talk about uh, the, the the spirits and the characteristics of the Holy Spirit. That's where we're going to be at today. And so I have my notes from earlier. Recognizing that the Holy Spirit comes bearing gifts. So let's go over to 1 Corinthians, the 12th chapter. We know over in John, Jesus tells the disciples when the Holy Spirit comes, what he's going to do. That's also important that we know that. Let, let, let me jump over to John 15 first. It says, But when the Comforter is come, whom I will send you unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth, which proceedeth from the Father, he shall testify of me. Let me say that again. John 15 and 26. But when the Comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father. Even the Spirit of Truth. That's, that, that's who he is. He is the Spirit of Truth. Uh, which proceedeth from the Father, he shall testify in me. Then when we go over to St. John 16 and the 13th, it says, How be it? When he, talking about the spirit, the spirit of truth, there it is again, identifying who he is off the bat. He is more than a comforter. He is a guide. He is the spirit of truth. And we're going to go over some characteristics and we're also going to go over uh, the gifts that he comes bearing. This is, this is so good, this is so profound, and so it is our desire here at The Balance of Life that what we are sharing, sharing with you, that it takes root in your spirit, and that you will begin to accept and recognize, obey, acknowledge the Holy Spirit. Once again, St. John 16, 13 says, How be it when he, the Spirit of truth, the spirit of truth, meaning he's not going to tell you a lie. He's not going to deceive you. He will guide you. He's a spirit of truth. He's also a guide. And to all truth. And so he is the spirit of truth and he will guide you into truth. He is the spirit of truth. He will guide you into truth. For he shall not speak of himself. Remember, he is a messenger. 
he is relating to you what the father is saying remember we just read over in saint john the 15th but when the comforter is come whom i will send unto you from the father jesus is, he, he, he said he's coming from the father he's not even coming from me he's coming from the father he is a representative he he speaks what god tells him to speak to you and i as individuals, as a whole, unto our families, unto marriages, unto regions, unto nations. He's coming from God. God sent him. Jesus said, I pray to the Father. I pray to the Father that he will send him to you. He is a he is truth, he will he will guide us into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. He has some insight. He's a part of the Trinity. He shall glorify me. He shall receive of mine and shall show it unto you. That's absolutely, that, that's, that's so profound. And so now let us take a look at, let's, let's now go to 1 Corinthians 12. When we are looking at the diversity of spiritual gifts, and I don't want to get ahead of myself because there's so much to cover here. In a certain section of, and we're going to start at the first verse because there's, there's so much to cover. We're going to cover the seven characteristics of the Holy Spirit during this session. And then we're also going to cover the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit. And we're looking at, let me just read these off, the gifts of the Holy Spirit. There's wisdom, there's understanding, counsel, fortitude, which is strength, knowledge, piety, fear of the Lord. I've already given you truth, guidance, and messenger of God. So I know that it says seven, but there's so much more to him. Once again, wisdom, characteristics, full of wisdom, understanding, counsel. Remember, he is the spirit of truth. Fortitude, strength, knowledge, piety, fear of the Lord the wisdom and the guidance and the understanding and the counsel, those are all locked in as one messenger of God. Then we're going to look at the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit. Word of wisdom, word of knowledge, faith, gifts of healing, miracles, prophecy, distinguishing between spirits, that is the spirit of discernment and tongues. So the Holy Spirit, whom is the spirit of truth, will guide us into all truth, also has gifts for us. And when he comes bearing these gifts, they are from the Father. Amen. You desire to please the Father, desire these gifts, Desire the word of wisdom. Desire the word of knowledge. Desire faith. This faith, the gift of faith. Now we have faith unto salvation. But there is also a gift of faith. Believing God at his very word. 
that you can call those things that be not as though they were. That is the gift of faith. If you don't have the faith that he can heal cancers, if your faith is just that, the common cold, then you're not going to have a faith of delivering brain tumors and cancers. You're just at the common cold and a hurting back. No, I believe him for much more than that. I know he's a healer for much more than the minor things. I believe that uh, he can heal breast cancer and cervical cancer and prostate cancer and, and cancer of the lungs and tumors of the brain. And I, I know that he's a healer. I believe that my faith is there. My faith says he can deliver, he can, he can heal of diseases that haven't even been named yet. You know those de diseases where they say, well, I just don't know what's wrong. He knows. And so the gift of faith can be elevated. Gifts of healing. Well, all of these gifts work hand in hand. Miracles, prophecy, distinguishing between spirits, which is the spirit of discernment and the gift of tongues. And so if you desire a closer relationship with the Father, desire one of these gifts, ask for it. Have faith that you will receive it because the Holy Spirit has these gifts and he wants to freely give them to you. But you must desire them, ask for them. First Corinthians chapter 12, the diversities of spiritual gifts. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. Ye know that you were Gentiles carried away unto these dumb idols, even as ye were led. Wherefore I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calleth Jesus accursed, and that no man can say that Jesus is the Lord but by the Holy Ghost. As we mentioned during our first session as well as this one, the Holy Spirit is our gateway. He makes known unto us the mysteries of God's word, the knowledge of Christ. And so invite him in. Allow the Holy Spirit to be just who he is, the spirit of truth. If there's something that you want to know about the Father, if there's something that you want to know about Jesus Christ, even if there's something that you want to know about the Holy Spirit, ask. Holy Spirit, reveal unto me just who you are. Holy Spirit, reveal unto me just who God the Father is. Who is Jesus Christ? Reveal that unto me. That revelation is nothing that you can find out through flesh and blood. It's a spiritual revelation. Now there are diversities of gifts, but the same spirit. Remember, you have characteristics, extensions of you. Kindness, if you're known for your kindness, it's a part of you. It's not separated from you. You know, some can say she did this kindness, but that's not who she is. That's not what I know of her. But the spirit and the gifts that the spirit uh, gifts that he bears, they're one. They're not separate. Love. You have to be loved to give love. How can you give something that you're not? My God, now that that that, that right there just hit my spirit. How can you be something that you're not? 
that you are a part of. I can't give wisdom, knowledge, and understanding if that's not who I am, if that's not what I seek after, if I don't study to share wisdom. How can I give knowledge on a subject if I haven't studied, if I haven't taken the time to know about it? If I just speak on something that I haven't studied, that that's not a part of me, I don't know what I'm talking about. You get what I'm saying? The Holy Spirit and the gifts that the Holy Spirit gives, they're one. He gives knowledge because what? He is knowledge. He gives truth because He is truth. He gives revelation because He is revelation. He gives strength because He is strength. He gives comfort because He is comfort, my God. He gives what He is. And so the question of who is the Holy Spirit, he is what he gives. He is counsel because he is counsel. He gives counsel. He is who he gives. The thing that he gives, that is who he is. And there are differences of administrations, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of operations, but it is the same God which worketh all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. And so the gifts that the Holy Spirit gives unto us is for the profit of us all. It's for the edification of the body as well as those who are lost. For those, uh, once again, how can I compel and teach about the love of Christ if it's not in me? How is that? I must learn about it. I must experience it. The Holy Spirit is going to allow me to experience it. I invite him in. Let me experience the love of Christ, my God. Let me experience the peace, the love, the joy of Christ. I want to experience that. Holy Spirit, allow me to experience that. I want to know the fullness of God. See, uh, that, that was Paul's desire that we experience the fullness of God. To know the love, the depth, the, the, the height, the weight, the length. That was his desire for us. But you can ask for that same desire. Holy Spirit, I want to feel God's presence all around me. I want his love. I want to feel the warmth of God's arms wrapped up around me. You know, when you begin to go through something and you say, I need my father, I'm not talking about my earthly father. I'm talking about my father in heaven because he can reach places and he knows me that man could never reach. Places and, and things that are going on in the individual that they don't even understand themselves, but my God knows because remember, he created me. Holy Spirit, let me experience the fullness of God. Holy Spirit, I'm not understanding this passage of scripture, so reveal unto me what is being said here. You can ask, and it shall be given unto you. But if you don't ask, if you don't invite him in, oh, where is your relationship with the Father? Where is your relationship with the Savior? If you don't have a relationship with the Holy Spirit, if you're not acknowledging the Holy Spirit, Really and truthfully, where is your relationship with Jesus and the Father? 
where what kind of relationship do you really have that's a question that i think that we all should ask ourselves talking about relationship my god that's that's another series that's another whole series for one is given by the spirit the word of wisdom once again the holy spirit gives what he is This is, and, and we, we will go back because I, I want to get to the characteristics because I, I want you to see the parallel. Isaiah 11 gives us a spirit of the Lord, the spirit of the Lord, which are the characteristics of the Holy Spirit. And over in 1 Corinthians, it talks about the gifts, the spirit of the word of wisdom, as mentioned in 1 Corinthians 12 and 8. And then when you look over it at Isaiah 11, there's a spirit of wisdom. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of wisdom. He gives that as a gift to you and I. My God. To another, the word of knowledge. Once again, Isaiah 11, the spirit of knowledge. He is what he gives. When you ask that question, and we should all ask this question, who is the Holy Spirit? Isaiah 11 tells us who the Holy Spirit is. The spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. We read off also, Jesus said, the spirit of truth. He will guide you. That's who he is. This is an introduction to who the Holy Spirit is. We can title this series, this portion of the series, Introduction to the Holy Spirit 101. This is who I am. And I give you me. I give you who I am. I give you the gift to operate in who already to Boshata. I give you the gift to operate in who I am. What a gift. My God, I give you the gift to operate in who I am. That blessed my soul. I give you freely for those who desire to operate in the gift that I am. By the same spirit to another faith, by the same spirit to another the gifts of healing, by the same spirit to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another diverse kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. But all these work is that one and self same spirit, dividing to every man severely as he will. That's beautiful. Dividing 
unto every man. And so one particular person might have this gift. You might have more than one gift. But they're divided. And you know why they're divided amongst the body of Christ? Amongst the local assembly? Because we're all supposed to work together for the edification of the body of Christ. Just like the fivefold ministry is supposed to operate in the local assembly, all five offices for the edification of the body, the gifts of the Holy Spirit are supposed to operate and work as well. It, 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 it's all about building the body. No one person is going to just have it all and you only have one person in the house and no one else is operating and flowing. That you are the only one with the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of knowledge, the spirit of faith. And, and you're just looking at, oh, I'm the only one and no one else is operating in it. Not so. There has to be someone else within that local body that's operating in the, the gifts of the spirit. There has to be. Because if there's just one person speaking in tongues and interpreting his tongues, only one person with the spirit of knowledge, the spirit of wisdom, the gift of faith, only one person. It's, it, it, it said it's right. It, it, it said it right here. Dividing to every man severely as he will. Not as you will, not as I will, as he will. The importance of all the gifts. 1 Corinthians 12 and 12. For as the body is one, and many have many members, and all the same members of that one body, being many, are one body, so also in Christ. I'll read that again. For as the body is one, we're all a part of the body. Many members, one body. There is but one Lord. There is one God, creator of heaven and earth. He is our Father. the Word, our Savior, our Deliverer, Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit, the voice of God, the eyes, the truth, the knowledge, the strength, the wisdom. Ah, oh God Not only, he, he, he hears and he speaks He hears and he speaks He sees and he shows He reveals He strengthens Who is the Holy Spirit? And what does he do? And how can I stay connected with him? I must understand who he is. I must get to know him. I must have a relationship with him. I must ask him for these gifts. He's bearing these gifts. He's giving you who he is. Let, let, let's go back over that again I, 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 I just want this to take root in your spirit Isaiah 11 
and the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. And when it's saying rest upon him, he's talking about the root of Jesse. He's talking about the branch. He's talking about Jesus Christ. And so that this is the spirit, the characteristics that will rest upon him. And the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. Now, this is what this, this is who the Holy Spirit is, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. And he shall make of him quick understanding in the fear of the Lord. And he shall not judge after the sight of his eyes, neither reprove after the hearing of his ears. But with righteousness shall he judge the poor and reprove with equity for the meek of the earth. And he shall smite the earth with the rod of his mouth and with the breath of his lips shall he slay the wicked. My God, this is, this is absolutely good. And so what does the Holy Spirit have to give unto us? Just who he is. First Corinthians 12 and eight, for to one is given by the spirit. Catch that, it's given by the spirit. I'm giving you who I am. I am love, I'm giving you love. I believe in potential, I am potential, I give you potential. I am kindness, I give you kindness. I am faith, I give you the gift of faith. I am comfort, therefore I give you comfort. I can't give you something I'm not. You can't give what you're not. We look for and expect things that we're not. You want truth and trust, but are you trustworthy? You want faithful, but are you faithful? You want understanding, but do you understand? You want compassion, but are you compassionate? You want what you're not willing to give and what you are not. And so there is this expectation that we have and we're not those things, but the Holy Spirit is giving you Him. He's giving you. It's a gift. Receive it. Ask for it. For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom. To another the word of knowledge. By the same Spirit. To another faith by the same Spirit. To another the gifts of healing by the same spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another diverse kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues, but all these worketh at one and the self same spirit, dividing to every man severely as he will. the importance for as the body is one and have many members and all the members of that one body being many are one body so also is Christ for by one spirit are we all baptized into one body so my gift is not greater than yours my gift is not more important to yours because the gift that I have received from the Holy Spirit is for the body of Christ. And so no, I'm not more important to you if, if I have the word of knowledge and the word of wisdom and you operate in the word of faith, the gift of faith, I'm not more important than you. It's all for the body of Christ. It's all because we're one body. And it came from the same spirit, the Holy Spirit. Wow. 
whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have been all made to drink into one spirit, for the body is not one member, but many. If the foot shall say, because I am not the hand, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? No, you're still a part of the body. That's just not your function. That's just not your gift. So uh, let's, let's say this in layman terms so that we all understand. Because um, I interpret tongues and not speak tongues, then mm, I'm not a part of the body. Not so you are so much needed for the interpretation of those tongues that was spoken. Neither can you dismiss a part of the body because they don't function the way you do or operate in the gift that you have. Introduction to the Holy Spirit 101. The Holy Spirit is saying, this is who I am. Hello, I need you to understand who I am. And I need you to understand that I'm giving you who I am. The gifts that I give you is who I am. I'm not giving you anything that I'm not. That keeps ringing in my spirit. I am the first partaker. We here at the Balance of Life, we, we are the first partaker of this word. I, 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 this is who I am. I'm giving you me. I, 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 and, and what I'm giving you is coming from the Father. I was sent from the Father to give you these things, to give you these keys, to give you this, this gift. Uh, uh, that's why I came. The Father sent me. Jesus said, I, I pray to the Father that the, the Comforter be sent unto you. The Spirit of Truth will lead you and guide you into all truth. He can't give something he's not. This is awesome, good. And if the ear shall say, because I am not the eye, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? You still a part of the body. Your gift is to see. The foot's gift is to walk and discernment and strength. The head is needed just as much as the feet. The fingers are needed just as much as the hand itself. The back is needed. The shoulders, the neck, it's all needed. We're intertwined. We need one another. And so once again, no one's spiritual gift outweighs someone else's. It doesn't make you more important. It does not push you to the forefront. You're, you're no. Spiritual gifts, they're, they're all needed. The five ministry, the function, it's not a title, it's a function. They're all needed to work together. They're all needed by each other. If the whole body were an eye, where were the hearing? So if all you do is see, what are you hearing? And if all you do is hear, what are you seeing? If all you do is hear and see, what are you speaking? What are you perceiving? And so if you silence the mouth and you hear and you see, who's going to speak it? My God. I'll say that again. If, if there is only hearing 
and seeing. And the mouth is silent. Who's going to speak? Or if all I do is hear and speak, what am I seeing? My God, if my eyes are closed and I only hear, I can't see. I can't touch. I'm blind. I need those eyes. I need that hearing. I need that mouth. I need that sense of the smell of the nose. I need to be able to touch uh, in the spirit. I need my limbs to move. My God. If the whole body were an eye, where were the hearing? If the whole were hearing, where is the smelling? See, this is scripture. It's not our opinion. It's not our words. This is scripture. This is Paul teaching. But now have God set the members, every one of them, in the body as it hath pleased him. And if they were all one member... Where were the body? Where's the body? Who are we representing? Why are you seeing and why are you hearing and why are you speaking and why are you moving? What's the purpose for the edification of the body of Christ? And the eye cannot say unto the hand, I have no need. Of thee, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. Nay, much more those members of the body which seem to be more feeble are necessary. And those members of the body which we think to be less honorable, upon these we bestow more abundantly honor, and our uncomely parts have more abundant comeliness. For our comely parts have no need. But God hath tempered the body together, having given more abundant honor to that part which lacked, that there should be no more schism to the body, but that the members should have the same care one for another. I care about you who have the gift of prophecy. Because we need to see. I care about who interprets the tongues, who has the gift of knowledge, the word of knowledge, the word of wisdom. You are so important and vital to the body. You are needed. You are so needed. The spirit of deceit has has come and said, "Why are you studying? Why are you? No one wants to hear you. That's a that's that's a lie from the pits of hell. You are needed. You are a part of the body until the ends of the earth. So, Holy Spirit, bring me in a path." that I may share the word of wisdom that you have given me. That I may share the word of knowledge that you have given me. That I may speak the word of faith, the gift of faith that you have given me. The gift of faith is more than about Asking for healing for the common cold. I need some demonic forces destroyed. I need some minds changed and some hearts converted. I need the lame to walk and some limbs that were no longer operative 
or that became damaged that 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 man said you'll never use those limbs again my gift of faith says yes they will I believe that they will I am encouraged today forevermore that it shall be we're gonna get through the rest of the 12th chapter and, and if God prolongs his coming part three of this series we will talk about the relationship of the spirit and the operation of love verse 26 of 1st Corinthians 12 says and whether one member suffer all the members suffer with it or one member be honored all the members rejoice with it now ye are the body of Christ and members in particular and God hath set some in the church, first apostles, secondarily prophets, thirdly teachers, after that miracles, then gifts of healings, helps, governments, diversities of tongues, are all apostles, are all prophets, are all teachers, are all workers of miracles, have all the gifts of healing, do all speak with tongues? Do all interpret? But covet earnestly the best gifts, and yet show I unto you a more excellent way, which is servitude. My God. What an awesome, awesome series, and I appreciate the unction of the Holy Spirit. That says, introduce me. Let them know who I am. They've misunderstood. They haven't gotten to know me. I have gifts that I shall give unto them. That they desire them. It is for the body of Christ. I am giving them me. The Holy Spirit is giving you him. It's an awesome gift. And the gift he's giving you is from the Father. So before in all actuality, we can understand that we should not grieve him, that we should obey his voice, we have to understand who he is. We have to understand that the Father sent him. We have to understand that he is the spirit of truth. He's the spirit of truth and he's going to give you truth. He's going to guide you in truth. He is the spirit of wisdom. My God. And so he will give you the gift of the word of wisdom. He's giving you him. Take that in your spirit. We thank you here at The Balance of Life for allowing us to share with you this time and this teaching, this series, The Oracles of the Holy Spirit. We are excited, so excited. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for your revelatory word. Thank you. Thank you. So that we can really, really appreciate just who you are. So we will know not to grieve you or hinder you, but allow you to do what you were sent to do. Jesus, my God, the word was sent to do a work. You, Holy Spirit, were sent to do a work. We would love to stay connected with you, with you on the balance of life. Email us today, aferguson.wrp at yahoo.com. If you would like a copy of this series, please email us, aferguson.wrp at yahoo.com, the Oracles of the Holy Spirit series, and we will get this over to you. As we always say, stay encouraged, encouraging others along the way. Have a blessed afternoon.